Hey all here OS Reviews, today we're taking a closer look at the Acaso WT50. This is a smart mini Pico projector that has a built-in Android operating system which allows you to directly view back YouTube videos, Netflix videos, without even connecting to anything. It supports wireless screen sharing if you have something like a smartphone, Android or iOS that you want to mirror over without wires. It can also be used as a traditional connected projector using a full-sized HDMI port. What's neat about the concept and design is it has a built-in trackpad on the top which you can use to move the cursor around, adjust the volume, it's all touch sensitive so you don't even need to bring along the remote. Like most Pico DLP pocket projectors, the native resolution is around 480p, so it's not going to be a replacement for a state-of-the-art 4K unit since it is so much smaller and meant for portability as its first criteria. Other specifications include built-in Wi-Fi, there's access to built-in Bluetooth. Uh, in terms of the system properties, technically it has 8 gigs of built-in storage. It's not the most powerful chip on here, of course, but for video streaming, it should more than suffice. And also also has auto keystone correction, so if you tilt it at various degrees, maybe the wall isn't completely flat, it will automatically adjust the angle of the screen. The Wi-Fi here is dual band, including 5G, so reception quality should also be quite decent. Furthermore, in terms of battery life, it should last for around three hours on a single charge. Average for a Pico projector, it's not outstanding, but you can always bring something like a power bank with you. Now, taking a closer look at the packaging here, it does come in a pretty typical box. The company Acaso does make action cameras, I believe, as their primary line, and this is one of their first uh, projector units that they're trying to bring out. Other packaging contents include a mini tripod, the aforementioned built-in remote if you don't want to use the trackpad on the top. There's also a free full-sized HDMI cable that you get, as well as a quick user manual. So taking a closer look at the design of this unit, first of all, it does feel extremely premium. The entire body is constructed out of a aluminum alloy material. The top surface here is made out of a tempered surface, almost like glass. So it has a definite heft to it, and it kind of should be because the price of this unit is uh, around 250 bucks. That's going to be a bit more expensive than other mini Pico projectors that I've seen before, often those without Android built on in sell for $50 to $60 less. So you're paying a bit more of a premium here because of the built-in OS. Spine here, we have a focus style to adjust the kind of sharpness of the image depending on how far away you are from the wall. It can project images up to 200 inches. Of course, you need to be in a pretty dark environment to do that because the brightness of Pico projectors aren't the highest. In fact, this one has about 50 ANSI lumens so it's going to be, again, best suited if you're in a dimly lit space. There's also a power key and also a switch that you can turn on the bulb. It's interesting that there's a dedicated switch just for that, but they basically do the same thing. There's also a micro SD card slot that you can use to pop in a card loaded with additional content that it can read back. There is a built-in loudspeaker. The other side features two full-size USB ports for additional accessories thumb drives, keyboards, mouse. There's also the charging port. Now, this is one of the cons of the design is it uses a proprietary round plug as opposed to, say, something like micro USB or USB type C. Now, there's also a headphone jack if you want to plug in your own and you don't want to use Bluetooth or the built-in speakers. Finally, there's a HDMI full-size port that you can use to connect devices directly. There's a ventilation port for the fan and also the lens for the projector. The bottom here features the standard tripod mount, and there is a switch that you can use to cover up the lens to protect it from dust and damage when you're on the road. A pretty thoughtful little additional feature. Even the base here is constructed out of metal, so it does have surprising heft to it. But the overall dimensions are small enough that you can easily put it into a pocket, put it into a backpack, and take it with you. Finally, there's also some soft touch rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around if you decided to put it completely flat onto a surface. Let's take a closer look at the performance and the software next. It's booted on, takes about 15 to 20 seconds to do a cold boot, so relatively fast. Right now we still have some lights on in the background and the image is still relatively clear. Pico projectors and DLP projectors have always performed better than their ratings would suggest. If you're looking at just the spec sheet alone and seeing the lumens and also the native resolution, you think that it's not going to be that great. But uh, for the most part, they definitely are better than expected. UI here is very similar to other Android TV boxes, and I can move the uh, kind of a touch sensitive area. I like the fact that it doesn't just present a point, but also highlights the box that you're hovering against. 
Right now our virtual screen size is around 50 inches on the wall and again things do remain quite sharp and clear. We can also flip the projector completely over and you can see it will still project the correct orientation for the image. So the auto keystone function is actually working quite well. It will compensate and make those micro adjustments for you. By the way, the touchpad does support multi-touch gestures like pinch to zoom and also two fingers to scroll up and down a list, which does work pretty well. It's been heavily customized in terms of the system, even the settings that you can see here looks almost unfamiliar compared to stock Android. One thing that would have been nice, uh, I would say, is to have a backlight feature on the trackpad and the touch controls, uh, since as it stands, uh, basically it's a little bit harder to see, um, again, in the completely dark environment if you are trying to kind of put your finger against it because it's just like a touch screen it doesn't have any feedback or anything that differentiates the area from the touch here versus some of the other buttons so having a slight backlight would have been nice we have access to the aforementioned airplay which is used to wirelessly share our screen and you can also access the full play store if you want to download additional applications things like video watching apps in addition to slight you know, lighter games will work as well. And you can also hop into the HDMI connection mode, which will turn off the kind of Android system essentially, and just allow you to mirror whatever is connected by that HDMI cable. Now there's a slight flickering that you see here, which is not visible to the human eye. That's just simply a interference between the projector and the frame rate of the camera. Uh, but overall, again, colors are pretty vibrant. This is using the built-in YouTube app that comes with the projector, very fast to load. AirPlay is for iOS devices, simply tap on the uh, you know device that you want to connect to in our case it's our iPhone and everything will now be mirrored over it actually works quite well again the dual band Wi-Fi is definitely helping in terms of improving the experience of course latency is still not going to be as low as if we connected it directly by cable but overall good enough for some kind of quick usage share over onto the larger screen we're able to play back some quick games that we want to from our phone on a larger display this is a quick demo that we can just tap on to start and what's interesting here is again in terms of text details are still definitely visible if you zoom in as you can see there and we are kind of playing along here and overall again there's going to be maybe a split second sometimes of latency but all in all really not bad in terms of the overall uh, experience is still surprisingly uh, decent Takeaway is that the quality is also not shabby. It definitely gets sufficiently loud if you're just watching some quick clips with, although it's not going to be, you know, completely free from distortion at higher volumes, but definitely does work in a pinch. Really, this projector is meant for video watching, so if you are relying on a lot of small fine text, uh, things like tiny newsletters, uh, things like work, such as if you're looking at a PowerPoint, an Excel document, that's not really the main priority here. Still, for some casual reading, it definitely still works, just don't expect it to be, you know, again, pin sharp in terms of the PPI count, and I think uh, you'll still be satisfied. With that's when some more jagged edges in terms of the pixelation will become a bit more apparent. But overall, again, good enough considering it's meant as a pocket projector. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Acaso WT50 Mini Smart Pico Projector. Again, really what makes this unique is the fact that it has a built-in touchpad in conjunction with an Android OS that allows you to get some stuff done without even needing to bring along your phone or computer necessarily. If you want something that has pretty much all the features under the sun packed into something that's very small and easy to take when on the road for watching videos and for entertainment more than business situations, I think this is worth a close Closer look. You can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the very well-built Acaso WT50 Mini DLP Pocket Projector.